Hello, sports fans, and welcome to the Scott Sports 101 Monday Night Football, Browns Monday Night Football pregame show, excuse me. Uh, and we're going to break down the game. I'm going to give my thoughts on what the Browns need to do tonight. And uh, we're going to talk about the, since it's been 25 years since the Browns were moved to Baltimore in 1995. We're going to go over all that. But first, here is today's Scott Sports 101 uh, Browns Monday Night Football trivia question. Who was the owner of the Browns that signed the deal to move the to move the team to Baltimore in 1995? I will have that answer later on the podcast. Well, it's been 25 years since the Browns broke Cleveland's heart and left for Baltimore. Chris McNeil, uh, earliest memory of being at Cleveland Brown at a Cleveland Browns game, goes back to 1987. McNeil was seven years old. The Browns uh, trailed the Jets by ten with just four minutes uh, remaining in the AFC Divisional Playoffs. But I'm standing on my chair, uh, McNeil recalls, yelling, We're going to win! Sure enough, Bernie Kosar emerged. A pair of uh, dramatic late-scoring drives, and, and Cleveland's, Cleveland prevailed in uh, double overtime in the third largest NFL uh uh, history game in NFL history, the marathon by the lake for its for its first playoff victory since 1969. McNeil uh, there with his parents and his uncle watching from around the beam, blocking his crew was hooked. Blocking his view was hooked. Excuse me. That magic has never left me. As as the team left, even as the team scruffled, McNeil said, "I always go back to that seven-year-old me." standing on the chair at Old Municipal, and we've been chasing that magic ever since. Tonight, 50 years after staging the first Monday night game in history, the Browns face up against their former selves, the Baltimore Ravens. In the biggest regular season game Cleveland has seen in decades, and that'll kick off at 8.15 on ESPN. 25 years ago, to the week, the former Browns <clears throat> played their final game at Cleveland Municipal Stadium before owner Art Modell shuttered the dog pound and shattered Cleveland's soul, relocating the franchise to Baltimore. Cleveland football eventually came back, but the Browns have yet to recover until potentially, potentially, finally, mercifully, now... We're going to see what happens tonight. Going into the showdown with the Ravens, Cleveland, Cleveland boasts its best record, 9-3, since returning to the NFL in 1999. The Browns technically can't clinch a playoff spot with a victory. They can, however, all but ensure an end to the NFL's longest postseason drought, while as a uh, cathartic bonus, dimming the playoff chances, of an eternity, uh, of, a, of an eternity at the root of much heart attack, of heart, much heartache by the lake. I don't think there is a fan base that's gone through more suffering in pro sports in the last quarter century," uh, said Joe Thomas, Cleveland's former All-Pro offensive tackle, who experienced one winning season. Uh, as a rookie in 2007 before retiring two years ago, and now considers himself a full-time Browns fan. When you go through that much strife and that much pain, you've come that far, the payoff and the emotion and the feeling of joy, I believe, is going to match that feeling of sorrow. Uh, but I've been around Cleveland long enough. You kind of go, you, you've got kind of got to guard your heart a little. The drive, the fumble, the move, watching Modell hoist that fi- that elusive uh, Lombardi Trophy, but with Baltimore, thirty different quarterbacks going one and thirty-one, nose diving into a laughing stock of the league. We're the kids at Christmas. 
with no toys. That's what it's like to be a Browns fan, said longtime Radio Cleveland host Tony Rizzo uh, of The Big Show on WKNR Sports Radio AM 850. But that's, but that uh, uh, resiliency of the, uh, of the Browns fan is un, is unmatched uh, by any in sports and the playoffs uh, and the playoffs we and the playoffs would be the biggest Christmas present we would ever get we could ever get and it and it would be uh, once the city one this city has been waiting for 17 seasons since 2002 uh, one of the best things about the NFL is Cleveland said ESPN's Mike Tannenbaum who worked in the front Browns front office uh, in 1995 that the si- that city loves its team it lives it and it definitely deserves a winner Phil Savage was driving to the Browns practice facility uh, for coach Bill Belichick's <coughs> Saturday morning uh, staff meeting uh, on November 4th, 1995. Which for me, that was my senior year of high school. Savage had been doubling as, a, as, as an on-road scout during the week and an assistant coach on the weekends. He flipped on the radio and he almost couldn't believe what he what he was hearing. Modell was moving, uh, was moving the Browns, igniting one of the most tumultuous uh, times in both Cleveland and NFL history. That's how I found out," said Savage, who ultimately followed Modell to Baltimore before returning to Cleveland in 2005 as general manager. That's almost how all. Uh, the Brown, uh, all the football staff found out. Excuse me. Uh, to that point, Cleveland has been uh, writing a renaissance after becoming the first major city to suffer an economic default since the Great Depression in 1978. The Cardiac Kids of 1980. To Kozar's deep playoff r- runs, <clears throat> the Browns embodied the city's comeback. We are, we are, we were rebuilding. Excuse me, our self-esteem," said uh, Fred Nance, who's uh, who, as city's attorney, would fight to bring the Browns back in 1999, and, and which they did come back, and the Browns were a big part of that. <clears throat> in 1994, uh, and the city in Cuyahoga County built a new arena to bring back the Cavaliers downtown and a new baseball stadium so the Indians wouldn't have to uh, share a municipal stadium with the Browns anymore. But as those money-making venues debuted, municipal uh, stadium was literally falling apart. Coaches and players had to hang their clothes on, on nails in the wall. The grounds crew unable to get grass to grow on the infield uh, after baseball season would just have to paint it green. And the plumbing barely worked, and basically the and basically the rest of the story is that the uh, old ballpark came down, and the Browns played their final game uh, in December. It was on December, I believe, uh, December twenty second, nineteen ninety five. It was close to Christmas, or December twenty sixth, the day after Christmas, on uh, nineteen ninety five. Excuse me, and uh, that's when. The Br- Modell took the team to Baltimore, but he was told that he could not. Uh, he had to leave the team name and the team colors and history of the team here in Cleveland. And uh, so, but needless to say, we did get football back in 1999. And the first two seasons, Chris Palmer was our, was our head coach. and But they, the Browns had two dismal seasons with him and he was out. Then Butch Davis came in, and then 2002, that's when the Browns were last in the playoffs. And then we went through a string of miserable seasons. I had a winning season, though, in 07, when Joe Thomas was with us. But then we had another string of miserable seasons, and that includes 
an 0-16 season with uh, Coach Hugh Jackson. And now we have a coach that knows what he's doing, but Chris McNeil has those memories, and he can't wait for tonight's game against the Ravens, and he hopes the Browns are going to win. Now, the Browns are going to have to score on the Ravens early tonight in this game and do what they did last week in their performance against the Tennessee Titans. But they're going to have to be really brown. And they're really going to have to really play the way they did uh, in uh, in their performance against Tennessee last week. The first half and, a, uh, and uh, the second half. Excuse me. Uh, Brown's coach, uh, Kevin Stefanski, doesn't have many warm and fuzzy memories of Cleveland's opener at Baltimore, other than it being his debut, of course. And it was miserable, forget forgettable afternoon, a beatdown. And boy, was it ever. And we didn't go back and watch that game, Stefanski said this week. But it's not going to, this game is not going to be the same. As in week one, Stefanski's decision to, to fake the season's first punt backfired badly, and it only got worse as the Browns throttled 38-6. Lamar Jackson threw three touchdown passes, and Baltimore's defense uh, forced three turnovers. Those months later, Stefanski has the Browns 9-3 uh, in a much better place as they prepare to play Monday night against the Ravens, who are 75 women during weeks of COVD-19 cases and postponements and are <clears throat> much healthier, but still not a playoff lock. With an inimitable Jackson back after a one-game absence. Revenge isn't the only motivating factor for the Browns in this second swipe uh, on their grip as uh, their grip on their first uh, pro postseason berth in 18 years and keep them in contention for the AFC North title which is suddenly back in play after Pittsburgh lost its first game and also its second game last night. Before any of that it's the Ravens who have been impressed by Cleveland's turnaround since week one. I've said this season opener that was that was a good football team and a lot of you guys just rolled your eyes, and I recall Baltimore coach John Harbaugh said to Baltimore beat writers this week, it it's pretty easy to see where, where they were going and what they were building. Uh, they, they are a good football team, and they were a good football team then. Uh, they came out the next week, a win over Cincinnati, and proved they were good, a good football team. Uh, the running system ha they've installed all three phases and they've stuck it to stuck to it and done a good job with it. The Browns know that to have any chance of beating the Ravens, who rushed for 294 yards in, tu in Tuesday night's last Tuesday night's win over Dallas, uh, the key is containing Jackson, and that is the and that is the key. Good luck. The league's reigning MVP is completely unpredictable with the ball in his hands. It's like uh, trying to settle to saddle a bucking Bronco when it looks as if you've got him. He's gone. There's no mystery with Lamar Jackson. Uh, it's extremely an extremely talented player, Stefanski said. Uh, he it's hard to get on the ground button bot, ground bottom line. He is a he's great, great player, outstanding with the ball in his hands, and then and then he can beat you with his arm and his arms or his legs. It's a challenge, and it's and it's a challenge that all of my guys on defense have to be have to be about their business. And we have some strong return. Miles Garrett look, looked like Miles Garrett last week, and he's got to do that again tonight. Cleveland start defense return after. Missing two uh, defensive end return after missing two games of COVID-19 and other uh, than showing the same understandable fatigue uh, and uh, in Tennessee's backfield and have one sack quarterback Ryan Samuel several times and forced Titans offensive lineman to resort to whatever it took to stop him. And they did that. And uh, that's what they're going to have to do tonight. And uh, I'll be right back. Stay with us.